Sana Kumara and Lady Master Venus, Hierarchs of the Planet Venus, Excerpts of the Masters and Their Retreats. Sana Kumara and Lady Master Venus, Hierarchs of the Planet Venus, Profiles of the Ascended Masters. Sana Kumara is known as the Ancient of Days. He is the great guru of the seed of Christ throughout the cosmos, hierarch of Venus, and one of the seven holy Kumaras, lords of flame who represent the seven rays on Venus. He initiates us on the path of the ruby ray, which he sets forth in his book, The Opening of the Seventh Seal. He has held the hierarchical position of the Lord of the world since the darkest hours of Earth's history when her evolutions fell to the level of cavemen and lost contact with the God Flame and the mighty I Am Presence. When the Earth was at the point of being dissolved because there was no one who was keeping the flame of the Christ Consciousness alive, Sana Kumara came to Earth a voluntary exile from his planet Venus to keep the flame until sufficient numbers among mankind would respond and begin once again to maintain the focus on behalf of their brothers and sisters. 144,000 souls volunteered to assist Sana Kumara in his mission and accompany him with the legions of angels. Sana Kumara described this momentous event in cosmic history. You call me Sana Kumara, and you know me as the one who stood before the Cosmic Council known as the Council of the 144. You know me because you were witnesses to my plea made for and on behalf of the evolutions of Earth, who no longer knew the presence of the Lamb, who by disobedience were cut off from the living Guru. You know me as the one who volunteered to embody the threefold flame within the Earth, unto the evolutions evolving within the seven planes of being, fire, air, water, and earth. The Cosmic Council had decreed the dissolution of Earth and her evolutions because the souls of her children no longer worshipped the Trinity in the threefold flame of life burning upon the altar of the heart. They had become the sheep gone astray, their attention fixed upon outer manifestations, they had willfully, ignorantly abandoned the inner walk with God. Thus the light of the temples had gone out, and the purpose to which God had created man, to be the temple of the living God, was no longer being fulfilled. One and all were the living dead, a matter vessel, without an ensouling light, an empty shell, Nowhere on earth was there a mystery school, not a chela, not a guru, no initiates of the path of initiation unto Christhood. The hour of judgment had come, and the one seated upon the throne in the center of the twelve times twelve hierarchies of light had pronounced the word that was unanimous consensus of all. Let earth and her evolutions be rolled up as a scroll and lit as a taper of the sacred fire. Let all energies misqualified be returned to the great central sun for repolarization. Let energy misused be realigned and recharged with the light of Alpha and Omega, once again to be infused by the Creator within the ongoing creation of the worlds without end. The requirement of the law for the saving of Terra. It was that one who should qualify as the embodied guru, the lamb, should be presented in the physical octave to hold the balance and to keep the threefold flame of life for and on behalf of every living soul. It is the law of the one that the mediation of the one upon the eternal Christos may count for the many until the many once again become accountable for their words and their works and can begin to bear the burden of their light as well as the karma of their relative good and evil. 
I chose to be that one. I volunteered to be a flaming sun of righteousness unto the earth and her evolutions. After considerable deliberation, the Cosmic Council and the Nameless One gave their approval of my petition, and the dispensation for a new divine plan for Earth and her evolutions came into being. Thus I knelt before the great white throne of the Nameless One, and he said unto me, My son, Sana Kumara, thou shalt sit upon the great white throne before the evolutions of Earth. Thou shalt be to them the Lord God in the highest. Verily, thou shalt be the highest manifestation of the deity that shall be given unto them through the path of initiation. Their souls shall rise to thy throne of awareness and stand before thee in the praise of the I am that I am, which thou art. In that day when they shall rise up and say, Blessings and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb for ever and ever. Behold, their redemption draweth nigh. And he said unto me, Thus unto the evolutions of the earth thou shalt be Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Saith the I am that I am, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty, and he placed upon me his mantle of sponsorship of the Father unto the Son, which would become in me his sponsorship of a life wave that he now made my own. It was a trust. It was an initiation of the Father in the Son. And the council of the 144, forming a single solar ring around the great white throne, intoned the word with the great beings of light, forming the inner circle round about the throne and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And I heard the echo of their chant of the holy, 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 all the way home to the morning star, to my twin flame, which you know as Venus, and to the sons and daughters of the love star. Winged messengers of light had announced my coming and the dispensation of the Cosmic Council and the dispensation granted. The six, my brothers, the holy Kumaras, who sustained with me the seven flames of the seven rays, mighty Victoria and his legions, our daughter Metta, and many servant sons and daughters who you know today as the Ascended Masters welcomed me in a grand reception. That evening, the joy of opportunity was mingled with the sorrow that the sense of separation brings. I had chosen voluntary exile upon a dark star, and through it was destined to be freedom's star. All knew it would be for me a long dark night of the soul. Then all at once from the valley and the mountains there appeared a great gathering of my children. It was the souls of the 144,000 approaching our planet of light. They spiraled nearer and nearer as twelve companies singing the songs of freedom, of love, and of victory. Their mighty choruses echoed throughout eternal life and angelic choirs hovered nigh. As we watched from the balcony, Venus and I, we saw the thirteenth company robed in white. It was the royal priesthood of the order of Melchizedek, the anointed ones who kept the flame and the law in the center of this hierarchical unit. When all of their numbers had assembled, ring upon ring upon ring surrounded our home, and their hymns of praise and adoration to me was concluded. Their spokesman stood before the balcony to address us on behalf of the great multitude. It was the soul of the one you know and love today as the Lord of the world, Gautama Buddha. And he addressed us, saying, O ancient of days, we have heard of the covenant that God hath made with thee this day, and of thy commitment to keep the flame of life until some among earth's evolution should be quickened 
and once again renew their vow to be bearers of the flame. O Ancient of Days, thou art to us our Guru, our very life, our God. We will not leave thee comfortless. We will go with thee. We will not leave thee for one moment without the ring upon ring of our chaliceship. We will come to earth. We will prepare the way. We will keep the flame in thy name. And so, as the Lord God directed me, I chose from among them 470 sons and daughters who would precede the 144,000 to prepare for their coming. For though they knew the darkness of the darkest star, in reality they did not know, as I knew, the real meaning of the sacrifice that they now were offering to make in the name of their guru. We wept in joy, Venus and I, and all the 144,000. And the tears that flowed on the memorial evening burned as the living sacrifice, fire flowing as the water of life from the great white throne and the cosmic council, our sponsors. Thus, when Sanat Kumara came from Venus to make the earth his temporary home, he was accompanied by a retinue of many great beings of light, including his daughter, the Lady Master Metta, and three of the seven holy Kumaras. The four hundred who formed the avant-garde were sent ahead to earth to build the magnificent retreat of Shambhala on the island in the Gobi Sea, where the Gobi Desert now is. Alchemists and scientists came also at that time, 144 of these focusing the 144 flames of the elements. Together they composed a replica of the diamond that is in the great hub, a focus of the diamond shining mind of God. On the White Island in the Gobi Sea, they built the city of white, patterned after the city of the Kumaras on Venus. Sana Kumara established the focus of the threefold flame in the retreat at Shambhala, which remained in the physical for many centuries. Sana Kumara resided in this physical retreat, but he did not take a physical body such as the bodies we wear today. It was in the matter universe, yet highly etheric, Later it became expedient for its protection that Shambhala, this wondrous retreat that was in the physical octave, be withdrawn to the etheric octave. The etheric focus remains as an exact replica of what was once the physical retreat. The beautiful Azar Sea with the white island in the center is now the Gobi Desert. Sana Kumara anchored a ray of light from his heart as a thread of contact with each one evolving on the planet Earth, nourishing and sustaining the flame and assisting the Holy Christ Self to quicken the Christ Consciousness. Without that assistance, mankind in mass would have gone through the second death and the planet would have been destroyed. The ancient custom of the Yule Log has come down to us from the service rendered by Sana Kumara, who each year consecrated a focus of the sacred fire in the physical octave. It became traditional for the people to come across many miles to take home a piece of the Yule Log and to use it to light their fires through the coming 12-month cycle. Thus, a focus of his physical flame was tangibly manifest in the dwelling places of the people of the earth, enabling them to have actual physical contact with a focus of the Lord of the world in their midst. Sana Kumara's mission was completed on January 1, 1956, when his most capable disciple, Gautama Buddha, was awarded the position of Lord of the World having enough momentum to hold the balance of the planet and the focus of the threefold flame. Sana Kumara then became the regent of the world, and in that capacity he continues to assist Earth's evolution from his home on Venus. 
Until this change in office, Sana Kumara released tremendous light to the planet each year at the Wesak festival during the full moon in Taurus. His radiation was anchored through his disciples, Lord Gautama Buddha, Lord Maitreya, and the one who currently holds the office of the Maha Koan. These three anchored the focus of the threefold flame from the heart of Sana Kumara on behalf of the Lord of the World. They were the step-down transformers for his intense radiation. Sana Kumara also figures in several roles in the religious traditions of the East. Each one reveals another facet of his divine self. He is revered in Hinduism as one of the four of seven sons of Brahma. They are portrayed as youths who have remained pure. The Sanskrit name Sanat Kumara means always a youth. He is the most prominent of the Kumaras. In Hinduism, Sanat Kumara is called Skanda or Kartikeya, the son of Shiva and poverty. Kartikeya is the god of war and commander-in-chief of the divine army of the gods. He was born specifically to slay Taraka, the demon who symbolizes ignorance or the lower mind. Kartikeya is often depicted holding a spear representing illumination. He uses the spear to slay ignorance. In Hinduism, stories of war are often used as allegories for the internal struggles of the soul. Skanda Kartikeya, as he is sometimes called, is also acclaimed as the god of wisdom and learning. He is said to bestow spiritual power upon his devotees, especially the power of knowledge. In the Hindu mystic tradition, Kartikeya is known as Guha, which means cave, or secret one, because he lives in the cave of your heart. Hindu scriptures also depict Sanat Kumara as the foremost of sages and a knower of Brahman. The Ascended Masters teach the, the Supreme God of Zoroastrianism, Ahura Mazda, is Sanat Kumara. Ahura Mazda means wise lord, or lord who bestowed intelligence. He represents the principle of good and is the guardian of mankind and the opponent of evil principles. Sometime between 1700 and 600 BC, Zarathustra formed Zoroastrianism in ancient Persia. One morning when he went to fetch water in a river, he beheld a luminous being who led him to Ahura Mazda, and five other radiant figures. So great was their light that he did not see his own shadow upon the earth. From this group of beings he received his first revelation of a new religion. Shortly after, Zorathustra became a spokesman for Ahura Mazda. After the withdrawal of Shambhala to the etheric octave, Sana Kumara embodied as Dipamkara, the lamp lighting Buddha. The Sanskrit word Dipamkara means kindler of lights or the luminous. In Buddhist tradition, Dipamkara is a legendary Buddha who lived long, long ago, the first of 24 Buddhas who preceded Gautama Buddha. Dipamkara prophesied that the ascetic Samedha would become the future Buddha Gautama. Buddhists considered Dipamkara, Gautama Buddha, and Lord Maitreya to be the Buddhas of the three times, past, present, and future. We can understand this to mean that Dipamkara is the past lord of the world, Gautama Buddha is the present lord of the world, and Maitreya will be the future lord of the world. In Buddhism, there is a great god known as Brahma, Sana Kumara. His name also means forever a youth. 
Brahma, Sanam Kumara, is a being so elevated that he must create an apparition body in order to be seen by the gods of the heaven of the thirty-three. Saka, the ruler of the gods, described his appearance. He outshines other devas in radiance and glory, just as a figure made of gold outshineth the human figure. The prophet Daniel also recorded his vision of Sana Kumara, whom he called the Ancient of Days. Daniel writes, Behold, till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels, his chakras, as burning fire. Sanakumara's twin flame is Lady Master Venus. During his long exile on the planet Earth, she remained on their home planet to keep the flame there. Some years after Sanakumara's return in 1956, Lady Venus herself came to Earth to assist her evolutions. In a dictation delivered on May 25, 1975, she announced that as Sana Kumara had kept the flame for Earth, now she had come to tarry for a time on Terra to dedicate anew the fires of the Mother. She said, I release a fiery momentum of consciousness to arrest all spirals that have taken from humanity the fullness of their divinity. See how mankind respond to the flame of the mother as they respond to the light of Sana Kumara. On July 4, 1977, Sana Kumara said that the Cosmic Council and the Lords of Karma have granted and decreed that I might be allowed to tarry on earth in an earth for certain cycles of manifestation for the absolute return of freedom into the hearts of the light bearers of earth. I place my body as a living altar in the midst of the people Israel. The term Israel applies to the collective body of the bearers of the Christic seed and Christ consciousness who have descended from Sanat Kumara and not exclusively to the Jewish people. The Ascended Masters teach that those who are of the I Am that I Am have embodied in all races, kindreds and nations. The term Israelite means, esoterically, he who is real in the mighty I Am Presence. In Hebrew, Israel means, he will rule as God, or prevailing with God. And in that body temple is the original blueprint, the soul designed for every son and daughter of God and the children of God who have come forth. For it is the desire of the Cosmic Virgin that none of her children should be lost, none of her sons and daughters. And thus I join the Lady Master Venus, who has been tarrying with you these many months, and we together, focusing our twin flames in the Holy City, will stand for the triumph of that community of the Holy Spirit that must be manifest as the key to the release of light in this age. In a dictation given July 4, 1978, Sana Kumara told us he was manifesting that night in the physical spectrum, and I am anchoring in this very earth plane the full weight and momentum of my office as the Ancient of Days such as I have not done since our coming to the place prepared at Shambhala. The strains of Sana Kumara's keynote were captured by John Sebelis in Finlandia. So powerful is the release of the flame of freedom through this music that during the Nazi occupation its playing was forbidden lest it arouse the fever of the people for freedom.